Let's look at an example of how to do row vector matrix multiplication via dot products. In this case, we're going to find the vector B equal to X transpose times A, where A is the four by three matrix with integer coefficients seen on screen. And then X is the four by one column vector given here. For those of you that have watched my other videos on this, this is the same matrix that we used in our previous examples. As I coach you on how to think about using examples in math classes, I want to refer you to a blog post that I wrote called a model for deep learning. In this post, I actually develop a visual representation of the deep learning process. And I named the title of that diagram, find the sweet spot. Remember that one of the best things we can do in learning is find activities that are just beyond our comfort zone and push us into the sweet spot, the location where deep learning happens. So in this diagram, we have kind of three different forms of practice. We have comfort zone practice, which is too easy and even a little boring. We have sweet spot practice. This is where deep learning happens. It's hard enough to be interesting, but easy enough to be doable. And then we have survival zone training, which is way beyond our current capacity. One of the tricks of using examples in math class is to find ways to turn each example into sweet spot training. This is one of the reasons that I use videos because you can pause the video and test yourself while you're doing the example. With that in mind, I hope you'll join me in forming the belief that the value of this example is not calculating the individual outputs. You could do that on a computer. The value of this example is actually to find your sweet spot with the individual definition. In other words, to use this as a practice to reinforce the definition in your brain. So with that, one of the best ways to get in your sweet spot is to do active recall, to test your brain to try to remember what the definition is. Let's do that. Using our definition of row vector matrix multiplication via dot products, we know that, pause the video here, what is the kth entry of the output vector that results from multiplying X transpose times A. Pause it and test yourself. I'm going to do that here. I remember that the kth entry, the entry in row one column K, is going to be the dot product between the vector X and the kth column of A. Well, I know X is going to be an M by one. A is going to be an M by N. So the kth column is going to be an M by one. So now I can actually visualize this without looking at a definition. Let me do this. It's going to be X one times A one K plus X two times A two K plus X three times A three K where I'm moving down the individual rows of the kth column. And then I go all the way down to the mth row. So the last sum end in this sum is going to be xm times a m k. Now that I've taken my guess, I'm actually going to confirm my guess by looking at a previous definition. The kth entry of the product is going to be the dot product between the vector x and the kth column of a. I remember that a is a four by three. So that means that x is going to be a four by one, x1, x2, x3, x4. Here, because a is a four by three, I know that the kth column is going to be a four by one. So now I have a1k, a2k, a3k, a4k. And I can write that dot product as x1 times a1k plus x2 times a2k plus x3 times a3k plus x4 times a4k. I did make one mistake. In my definition in my test, I did it in the general case, but in this situation, I already knew the dimensions, so I could have actually refined it so that m was equal to four. I can remember that. One of the lessons I can take away from that small mistake is, when I'm applying a formula to a specific example where the dimensions are known, I can actually write out the explicit formula for the values that I know a priori. Let's stay in our sweet spot and test ourselves over and over and over again to solidify this knowledge in our brain. Now that we have the general approach, let's go ahead and find all individual entries using this definition. We knew that A was four by three, X was one by four, which means the output vector B that we're looking by is a one by three. So if we use this, we're going to do three separate entries. We'll start with K equal to one. So the first entry of B, we remember, I'm going to actively test myself that the first entry is going to be the dot product between the vector X and the first column of the matrix A. But we know what those look like. This is going to be X1, X2, X3, X4. This one's going to be A11, A21, A31, A41. When I take that dot product, I multiply the entries in the individual rows. So this is going to be X1 times A11 plus X2 times A21 plus X3 times A31 plus X4 times A41. I close my eyes. 
to show you that I'm not just reading this off the page, I'm actually actively testing myself on what this definition is. Let's continue to develop our verbal descriptions here. Notice that the index on each entry of X matches identically the row index on each entry of A, and the column indices on the individual entries of A match the entry number on the output vector B. Now let's just remember what the individual entries of X and the individual entries of the first column of A are. So X1 is going to be 2 multiplied by A11, which is negative 3. Then we add that to X2, which is negative 1, times A21, which is negative 1. Then we go down, X3 is 5, A31 is 0, and X4 is 3, A41 is 2, and here is the sum that I'm searching for. We remember that the whole point of this example is to cement the definition, but we don't want to make a simple arithmetic error. So in this case, I'm just going to go step by step. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, 5 times 0 is 0, 3 times 2 is 6. We know that negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, we know that negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5, and negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1. Here's our guess of what we think the first entry of B should be. Let's keep going with the second entry of B. Remember that the point of the example is not the simple arithmetic calculations, it's actually to create a robust neural network that encodes the definition. I like to say that one of the ways to do this is to create an artifact of learning, an actual entry by entry log of all of my discoveries that I can use to jog my memory for years to come. That's why you see my notes are so neatly written and easy to follow. I do that to create visual representations of what's happening in my mind that allow me to remember things years beyond the work that I'm actually doing. With that, let's look at the second entry. We know that the second entry is going to be the vector x multiplied by the second column. Before I actually write that down for myself, I'm going to test myself, stay in my sweet spot. So that's going to be x1 times a 1, 2, plus x2 times a2, 2, 2, plus x3 times a3, 2, plus x4 times a4, 2. Now I got to do the actual work of verifying my guess with the uh, formal definition. The second entry is going to be x dot product with the second column. I know what each of those looks like because I have the dimensions, and indeed my guess was correct here. So I'm feeling pretty good that I got this definition in my mind. Now we do the simple process of substituting the actual values from our example into the general form. So I know that x1 is going to be 2. The first entry of column 2 is going to be 4. Then I add that to negative 1 times 7. Then I add that to 5 times 1. Then I add that to 3 times negative 5. And I do each of those calculations individually. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. 5 times 1 is 5. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Here I've got 8 plus negative 7 is 1, plus 5 is 6. 6 plus negative 15 is going to be negative 9. So my guess that the second entry of our vector is negative 9. I've actually verified where I got that from. Let's move on to our final entry in our vector b, which is going to be x transpose times a. That's going to be the vector x dot product with the third column of a. I know what each of those looks like, since I know that x is a 4 by 1 and a is a 4 by 3. So here, b3 is going to be x1 times a13 plus x2 times a23 plus x3 times a33 plus x4 times a43. Once again, I just use the definitions that we had to fill in each individual value. So x1 is 2. We got the first entry of the third row is negative 3. And then I add that to negative 1 times 6, 5 times 2, 3 times negative 2. We do each of those calculations individually. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8. So I have a guess for my third entry. In this example, we've constructed the vector b, which was the row vector x transpose multiplied by the matrix a, by partitioning a into columns and thinking of each entry of b as a dot product between the vector x and the individual columns. Our guess in this case was that that output vector was going to be 1 negative 9, negative 8. I like to say that one of the best things that we can do in a mathematical example towards the end of our work is ask, can I generate this result in a different way? In this case, we're going to do two separate checks of our guess output. Specifically, we're going to do one of them called the fast way. I think this is really not very helpful for learning, but it is a useful me mechanism to do this calculation quickly. Specifically, notice that with the row vector matrix multiplication, we want to get the individual entries. So I can actually work across the vector x transpose and down the individual column. So here, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 
plus one is negative five, plus zero is uh, negative five, plus six is positive one. That's exactly what I got. So now we'll go down to the second one. Two times four is eight, minus seven is one, plus five is six, minus 15 is negative nine. That's exactly what I got. And then here, two times negative three is negative six, minus six is negative 12, plus 10 is negative two, minus six is negative eight. So I've done a quick calculation. I actually would say this is great for a test environment, not so great for solidifying learning in my brain while I practice. In my classes, I do not use timed exams because I think they're horrible proxy measurements for good learning. However, there may be people watching this video that aren't in my class, so this is a quick mechanism to do that calculation. Of course, the other thing that we can do is use Octave Online, which is our online matrix calculator, equivalent to MATLAB. To do that, we'll store the matrix A and the vector X. To store A, remember that when we write the entry by entry definition, we break up the columns by commas and the rows by semicolons. So here we say A gets negative three comma four comma negative three. Then we say semicolon down to the next row, negative one comma seven comma six, semicolon down to the next row, zero comma one comma two, semicolon two comma negative five comma negative two. And then when we put this semicolon, it suppresses the output. And then here we'll define X equal to two semicolon negative one semicolon five semicolon three. When I push enter, Octave stores both in memory. Now I can do one of two things. I can set B equal to X transpose times A. Here I see that I get one, negative nine, negative eight. I would claim that the output that we just generated was vector approach because we did it all at once. Let's do a matrix approach. Specifically, let's go ahead and clear the vector B. So notice that B is no longer in memory. So if I push B, there's nothing there. And then let's go ahead and clear the entire thing with CLC. Now let's look at B as a matrix with all zero entries, one row and three columns. So now that gives me a kind of a blank template. We'll look at the first entry of B is gonna be the dot product between the vector X and the first column of A, which is the actual formula. Notice that I do get one just as I expected. Now, if I push the up arrow, it will give me the last command that I ran. So let's go over to the second entry of B, which is gonna be a dot product between the vector X and the second column of A, and we push enter. Now that overrides the zero with the output negative nine, which is what I expected. Let's go up one more time. I push the up arrow on my keyboard, and we'll go over to the third column, which is gonna be a dot product between the vector X and the third column of A. And that gives me one, negative nine, negative eight. So we now have four different ways to calculate this that we've seen, all of which came out with the same output, we're feeling pretty good about our initial guess. That leads very nicely into my community challenge. For those watching at home, could you come up with a for loop implementation of this operation that runs through the individual entries of the output using a for loop to do what we've just done here? In my MATLAB class, we're gonna go through a video that does exactly that. Thank you so much for your attention. With that, we'll end this video and we'll move on to algebraic properties of the row vector matrix multiplication, which we'll see in the next video. I'll see you there.